Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hans Peter Zenner from the National Academy of Sciences in Germany, which is also called Leopoldina. I'd like to welcome you on the occasion of the ninth symposium on human rights and science. Dear Professor Jasper, we are very indebted to you and to the Royal Academy that you are hosting this meeting in this year, the ninth in a long series of European meetings. This year, the topic is human rights and climate change. And uh, this is uh, a good idea to have been taken uh, this topic, climate change, because just uh, subsequently to this meeting, the uh, World Symposium on Climate Change also will be happening or will be, will be organized in Scotland. Science needs freedom, and that's why uh, there is human rights, a topic in many of the national academies in Europe, but also worldwide. Worldwide, there is around more than 80 national academies that have been found together in the international human rights networks of academy and scholarly societies that I'm Happy to welcome also the representative of the Human Rights Network in Washington. When I say human, or when I say science need, needs freedom, we are dealing with human rights because in the majority of all states, of all countries in the world, this freedom is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It is more than 50 countries all over the world where scientists and medical doctors have been detained or even killed, simply because they have been expressing their opinion. And this is what we are dealing mostly with. And this is what usually the um, earlier meetings we have been organizing together with academies from other European countries all over Europe which we have been dealing with. This year, climate change, one of the biggest challenges facing humanity. Uh, we have been dealing with that already a few years ago when we have been meeting in Helsinki and we learned that climate change had an impact of the indigenous people living in the Arctis and uh, nobody did take care of them and a lot of human rights violations are still happening with those people where climate change plays a role. We have a lot of keynote speakers from all over Europe and I'm happy to welcome them. And I'm, all, I'm also happy now to hand over the microphone to the organizer, to the main organizer of this meeting which is Professor Jaspers. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, which is Scotland's National Academy, to the Symposium on Climate Change and Human Rights. My name is Marcel Jaspers, and I'm Vice President International for the Royal Society of Edinburgh. The Royal Society of Edinburgh was founded in 1783 and brings together sciences, arts, humanities, business, and third sector, making it unique amongst the world's academies. It makes us uniquely placed to co-host today's event, and I'd like to thank the Leopoldina and the Young Academy of Scotland for working with us on this. I'd like to take an example of the issue of human rights and climate change by considering the plight of small island developing states that will lose their fundamental human rights as a consequence of climate change. I have seen them act as a bloc at UN negotiations on the new ocean treaty, and recently met with some of their diplomats to summarize a report I co-authored for one of the small island developing states. I see a change in attitude. They've changed from being small island states to large oceanic states, given their enormous ocean territories. The case is strong and clear, and, on, and based on the clear fact that it must contribute, uh, sorry, their case is strong and based on the clear fact that they contribute little CO2, but will be harmed the most if climate change is not addressed sufficiently. The case of Kiribati highlights all the issues highlighted. The right to life and health, by 2100, Kiribati will be submerged, but it will be uninhabitable long before then. 
the right to fresh water. There is already salt water ingress into water courses, so this is already a pressing problem. The right to food. There is little arable land, so the main source of food and income is fisheries. As the reefs die out due to, due to rising sea temperatures and acidification due to CO2 uptake, we are seeing a reduction in fish hatcheries and thus reduced food sources and reduced income. Much food is already imported, but a reduction in fisheries will make this worse. The right to housing and the standard of living. The most drastic outcome being considered is the need to relocate all 100,000 Kiribati Islanders to another country, thus destroying their way of life and culture. Kiribati has already taken a lease on a part of the Fijian island for potential relocation. I think this exemplifies all the points to be discussed at the symposium and brings home the drastic measures that will affect those countries' human rights. I look forward to our discussions over the next day and a half and look forward to meet, meeting some of you in person at next week's COP26 in Glasgow.